Uh, this is for Riley. I want to go back to something you said at the selection show. My name is uh, Brian Milam, WKYT Lexington, by the way. You talked about this being a Cinderella moment, but if you all were to win, it would not be an upset per se. Could you comment on that again? Yeah, I just feel like going into every game, um, when we're playing together, we're having fun. Like, we trust each other. We feel like we were made for this, and, and we're all older guys. We've been here before. Like, we play basketball a long time, and, and we know how we play. We play off of each other, and we feel like going out there, we have a chance to win every game. So, Question on the left-hand side, gentlemen. Hi, I'm from Chicago Tribune, Paul Sullivan. Uh, for any of you guys, uh, you played a pretty tough non-conference schedule, Alabama, uh, Purdue. Uh, how did that prepare you for uh, this game, do you think? Drew first, and then Jordan, please. I think just getting used to the size factor. A lot of these teams are big, but we're kind of a big team too. But I think just getting used to that, getting used to the speed, uh, definitely is going to help us uh, tomorrow. <laughs> I would say just uh, challenging ourselves and just not trying to make things easy for us is going to help us when we get in a game like tomorrow. Good. Tom Lewis with the Eagle Sports Network. Uh, building on <coughs> that non-conference schedule prep, you played three Big Ten teams uh, during during your non-conference schedule. And a lot of times conferences have their own kind of personality as far as their teams and their approaches. How would Illinois – stack up or compare against the style you saw against those other three Big Ten teams? Khalil, you're up, followed by Riley and Drew. Um, well, you know, the Big Ten Conference is a real great conference, competitive conference, uh, a lot of good teams. So um, I think the teams that we got a chance to play against, the Purdue's and the Indiana's, like that was that was a great test for us. And um, it, it definitely will prepare us for tomorrow and have us to the point where it's not so much of a shock when we get on the court against those guys and it would be more just another game. I feel like going back to what Drew said a little bit with the size factor, I feel like getting to play those guys, we're not intimidated anymore. We we played three of them from the Big Ten, as you were saying, and we just go out there and, and do what we do. We know we're in the game against Indiana, and we feel like earlier in the season we didn't have things figured out. But where we're at right now, we're very confident, and we feel like we can play with anybody. And I think they're going to have to go into this game honest. You know, we played Indiana. We were up pretty big at one point, and we just let the ropes go. But um, they're going to look at that and be like, this team, it's a formidable team. So, like, they're not going to go into this uh, game like it's an easy win. So uh, I think we'll be ready for them. David Patrick, Morant State Video. Guys, beating Clemson last year in the NIT, especially for Drew, uh, you had to dig out of a hole early. You got behind, you came back and won the game. How important is it tomorrow to not play behind the eight ball and to get off to a good start and not have to rally? Yeah, I think we started off 10-0, actually. But again, like we had guys, we went in that huddle, that uh, media timeout, and we, we, we didn't flinch. We knew what we could do, and uh, we proved that. But starting off tomorrow, we definitely have to start off strong, and we have to make sure we, we gain a lead for sure. We'll have Jordan answer that question as well. How important is it not to get in a hole? Um, Khalil, you want to take that one? You you played in that game, so I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather Khalil get that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially in a time like March when the team gets confidence, if they get up big, um, it, it makes the game a, a lot harder than it you know than it needs to be. So I think for sure, like, we had a few games this year where we, we, we had some, some slow starts, and um, we just – this is not the time for that. So we need to make sure we're on our A game tomorrow. Uh, this is for uh, Drew and Jordan. At the beginning of the year, you lose Mark Freeman, who was the preseason OVC player of the year. What did that do to you then? How did you recover? And then to see Riley become the OVC player of the year. Jordan, you're first. Then Drew, please. Uh, it was tough. It happened in a pickup game, and you know we really didn't expect it, and we was hoping he could come back. But um, we always had a next man up mentality, and having somebody like Riley come in and be another player of the year for us was huge. And I think we just we just kept kept our confidence and kept believing in each other, and that's that's really where it starts. And then I'll say uh, I always say this: Mark's like my older brother. 
Uh, so it really hurt me, and I was really sad about it. But I knew that these guys right here, um, it was just always next man up. And I knew that, you know, some nights it's going to be J2's night, some nights it's going to be Riley's, and some nights it's going to be Khalil's. But I knew uh, we had something special with Riley that not a lot of people knew about. <laughs> For anybody up there, Matt Stevens with IlliniGuys.com. Uh, having seen Illinois on tape, do you guys feel like there's a pace or a style that this game has to be at for you guys to get a W, or do you guys feel like you can play any kind of way and, and maybe come out of this thing? Jordan first, and then Khalil, please. Um, I think in a game like this, you don't you don't really want to play their style. We want to play our style and do what got us to this point. And I think if we trust in each other and trust in what the coaches tell us and follow the scouting report, I think it will be right where we want to be. Yeah, uh, we definitely can't let them control the game. We have to be the aggressors from from the jump and, and, and try to, like he said, make make the game our game. Um, it's a lot harder when they, when they get to play confident in their style of play. Tom Lewis, again, Eagle Sports Network. After you won the OVC tournament championship, Coach Bradlin used the term faithful to describe this team a faithful group and I know faith is incredibly important to at least a couple of you drew even getting baptized before starting postseason play talk about the importance of faith uh, in, in the context of where you are right now Riley so, yeah Riley and Drew please in that order um I would just say like it's this has been a dream come true and we wouldn't none of us four of us one through 15 everybody on our team we wouldn't be here without God he, he's the reason. He's our strength. He's what keeps us pushing. Uh, he's what brought us together and has allowed us to love each other. Um, without him, none of this would be possible. So uh, I feel like we're, we're a very faithful group, as Coach P was saying, and we pray before every game. Um, we trust in him every, every chance we get, and, and it shows on the court. Yeah, going off of that, um, I think all of, all the guys up here can say we give all the glory to God, and uh, I hope that when we play tomorrow, we can uh, show everyone in the world that we're playing for Him and something bigger than just basketball. David Patrick Morgan State Video guys, talk about the specialness, and any of you can elaborate that of being here, taking it all in, but at the same time you got a basketball game to win. How do you balance that? being your first trip to the NCAA tournament. All right, we'll go to Jordan, then Riley, then Khalil, please. I think it's uh, it's a special moment. And I think we're all pr we're all happy to be here and proud to be here and I think it's something that we that we knew that we could accomplish. And I feel like with us we don't we don't feel like we're done. Like we don't feel like we're finished or we accomplished what we set out to accomplish. So I just think having that hunger, having that will to win is going is going to help us tomorrow. Yeah, I feel like, um, as I said earlier, it is a dream come true. Like, all of us as children dreamed of being at this moment and at this stage at the highest level of basketball. But at the same time, uh, we don't continue to think of that. Like, we, we continue to think of the brother next to us, the teammate next to us that we play for. And a big motto that we've brought into this, uh, our conference tournament, is just having one more day. Um, and that's what... I feel like is continuing to push us and, and allowing us to compete at our highest level without pressure. It's just we want to play one more day together. Like We love each other, and, and we're, we're willing to do whatever it takes to, to have just one more day. So, Yeah, I think the, uh, the biggest thing is definitely the one more day piece of it. Um, I've been having so much fun. I, I just don't want this to end. So I think the balance of you know trying to have fun, which basketball is supposed to be fun. So... I think it's it's a balance of having fun, but then at the same time, it's like we got to lock in. Like it's like you said, it's another game, and it's one of our most important games. So it's it's, it's cool, but like you said, just one more day. That's that's the push. We are under four minutes to go. We have a question right on the inside aisle, right here. Brian Milam, WKYT, Lexington, inside Johnson Arena. There is a huge picture of Demonte Harper in 2011, hitting the shot to beat Louisville. In your dreams, that you've mentioned dreams, to be a part of March Madness, doing something like that, but also making a run and being the next double-digit seed to do something great, how often do you think about that, or 
do you just kind of put it to bed and say, we'll let the game play out? Or sure. any of the players? Yeah, Jordan, Drew, and Riley, please. Yeah, I would say, I think we don't think about it too much. I don't feel like we do. I think we, we just try to approach the game like we approach any other game and just believe in what the coaches tell us. We have a great coaching staff and we have a great team. We have a team full of guys that come to work every day and don't complain and they show up and you see, you'll see it tomorrow. Just the energy we, that we have on the bench is like, it's contagious. And so I just think going into tomorrow with, with that same energy and that same belief in one another, um, we don't we don't look at a, a seating or, or a number or a ranking. We just, we, we look at each other and we believe in each other. Yeah, and I'll go off of that. I think, I 100% agree. I think we're gonna, gonna play for each other. Um, I'm gonna play for Riley, Khalil, and the rest of my guys, and J2, and my coach P. And I'm just going to give everything I got and just leave it out there. And whatever the result may be is is in God's hands. Um, I would just say that that was a great year that they had, and they made a that was their our first win in Moorhead State history in the March Madness tournament, and that's that's amazing. But this is this is our year, and we're uh, we're just trying to do it how we want to do it. And there's no pressure on living up to those expectations. It's just. It's just playing together, trusting each other, and then and just living with the results. At the end of the day, we know we're gonna leave it all out there, but it just it just goes off of that. We're, whatever happens, happens. But we're here to.